Hey guys, it's Derek. Today we're going to be uh, looking real quick at security groups and uh, network access control list, otherwise known as NACLs. These are going to be your two primary guards uh, to control what kind of traffic is allowed to come into your uh, EC2 instances as well as the uh, subnet that your instances actually reside in. So. Uh, this will give you kind of a visual of what that would look like, but to kind of walk you through it, let's just say that we had, you know, a user somewhere out here in the internet uh, makes a request to access your web application, which is running on uh, these two instances. So they make a request, it comes into your VPC, and it's destined for those servers. So before it can actually even get to the server's uh, subnet, there are the subnets that's hosting the servers, it needs to hit the NACL. And a NACL is a stateless uh, security configuration that controls traffic at the network level, right? Uh, hence the name, network access control list. So what this is going to do is it's going to uh, either allow or deny traffic into the subnet where your instances are located. Uh, it's important to remember that uh, NACLs are stateless. This is a pretty common question on uh, tests, actually, uh, AWS tests, you know, um, in regards to which one is stateless and which one is stateful. Security groups have a state, NACLs do not. Uh, and basically what that means is that, uh, you know, you for each request, each way in and out, with the NACL, you need to say, you know, what's allowed. Uh, a security group, on the other hand, will, if it allows something into your instance, uh, you don't have to specify to allow it out, okay? So once this request passes through your NACL, it gets into your subnet, which is this uh, kind of gray area here, it then has to hit the security group. And the security group, it's important to remember that they have uh, implicit uh, deny uh, rules, right? So if you don't specifically say something is allowed into your instance, it's gonna be denied. So once that request uh, hits your security group, if it is indeed allowed, it will be sent over to whichever instance uh, this security group applies to and then your instance will send back uh, you know maybe whatever kind of request uh, this end user wanted to get back and then it'll come back out and get to them uh, but kind of the key takeaway here is that uh, NACLs control access at the network level so they control what actually can get into your subnets and security groups control access to the instances themselves okay so let's go ahead and do a quick demo on how to set up uh, a, a NACL and a security group. I'm just going to do this from the console. So I'm logged into my console and you can actually find both of these uh, microservices in uh, the VPC service. So I'm going to go into there, let's let this load up, boom. And so now if you come on the left here, you'll see this uh, security section, we've got uh, NACLs, we've got security groups. All right, so let's create a NACL first. So I'm going to create a NACL. Uh, I'm just going to call it, let's maybe say test NACL. And you would specify which VPC it's going to apply to. We'll just use the defaults. Uh, you can give it tags if you want. So say like you're using uh, some NACLs for maybe like, you know, production subnets versus test subnets, you would you could do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create this NACL here. And what you need to do now, if you notice this one down here is associated with uh, six subnets, you need to make sure that you tell AWS which uh, subnet or subnets you want your NACL to you know, apply to and, and start limiting or granting access to. So if we uh, were to come in here, we could come into subnet associations. We could say edit subnet associations. And I've got a few different subnets here. Uh, I don't know, let's just uh, pick a couple of these. Cool. So it should apply to US East 1D and 1E, just two of them. And we can see that uh, it indeed is associated with two subnets. That would be D and E. That's just kind of their unique, uh, unique names there. Um, 
So if we were to come down here now, we could say we want to specify some uh, inbound rules. And uh, so far, let's actually just come in here. So, so far what this is saying is that um, all traffic from anywhere on any port, right? Zero, zero, zero slash zero is basically the internet and any IP address ever. Just deny it all. So this NACL right away is by default saying, uh, you know, hey, we want to just deny everything. Nobody gets into this subnet. Um, but if you wanted to add a new rule, you could come in here, you could uh, give it a rule number. Generally, uh, you know, you should space out rule numbers by 10, so you would do like 100, 110, 120, whatever. I'll just uh, start at 100. You could specify what type of traffic uh, it's going to be looking for, right? So you could say maybe uh, H we want HTTP traffic because we're hosting a web server. And uh, if you look through here, again, the source is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so it's going to be allowed from anywhere. So if we were to hit save changes, and now we look at the uh, inbound rules, uh, we should now have uh, HTTP-based traffic able to access uh, these two subnets. Everything else would be denied, okay? So that is how you set up and configure a NACL. Uh, but like I mentioned, with NACLs, you need to specify, you know, things are allowed to get out as well. And uh, <clears throat> kind of the same thing here. Uh, everything is denied right off the bat. So we could say, uh, you know, maybe we just actually want to, you know, allow just, I don't know, let's call it everything. So we could come in here, we could say all traffic, everything, zero from everywhere, allow, boom. Uh, and now it'll allow outbound, any kind of outbound traffic uh, from anywhere to come out of this subnet, okay? So that is how we set up and configure NACLs. That is how we associate them with subnets and how we can add or remove rules, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just real quickly uh, get rid of this uh, knackle here. Uh, contain, oh, so we have to deassociate the subnets first. So let's just uh, do that real quick. So let's deassociate these, save changes. And all right, so now we should be able to delete this and type delete. All uh, right, and there we go. Now we're just left with the default. So security groups is pretty similar. I've already got a few here, but let's just look at making a new one. So we can call this a test security group. And again, you want to put a description here uh, in general so you and other people looking at it kind of know what it is and what's going on. Uh, we can specify inbound and outbound rules. So again, maybe, you know, we want uh, this HTTP traffic coming from a user's browser to be able to uh, access our instance. So access from uh, internet uh, HTTP requests, let's say. All right, you go ahead and, uh, oops. Uh, go ahead and leave that as it is. If you want to add any uh, outbound rules as well, you can definitely do that. Uh, but remember, this isn't like a NACL where you need to specifically say what's allowed in and out. So uh, because we are, uh, if we didn't have this, so if we were to just get rid of this, uh, by allowing this HTTP traffic in, whatever response uh, this uh, request is looking for, the security group will just uh, automatically allow it to go back out because it was a good request coming in. It fit, you know, fit the requirements. Um, so yeah, that's uh, how security groups work. Of course, you could add more tags, kind of the same situation that I was referencing earlier. So if we, oh, actually, once you have a description, all right. So let's just say uh, SG that. Uh, provides inbound access for HTTP requests. All right, now we should be able to create that. That yeah, looks good. All right, and again, you can uh, come here to your uh, security groups console, and if we find the one that I just created, 
You can see some details about it, uh, what VPC, it, VPC it's using, uh, inbound, outbound rules, and of course any tags if you did add tags to it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, all you need to know about security groups uh, and knackles. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this security group real quick. And there it goes, perfect. So there you go, that is how we uh, set up manage and configure NACL security groups and also what they're used for.